Let's go back to the h lab study. As you might recall, we said that of those offered help, 76% won their cases. And we said that of those not offered help, 72% won their cases, okay? Now, before I show you the actual results of the hypothesis test from the study, um, let's pretend there were only three people in the study because it's way easier, especially when we're doing this by hand, okay? In real life, don't actually do a hypothesis test if you only have three units. Um, however, if I'm going to ask you to do a hypothesis test by hand, you are going to be very glad if I say something like, hey, there's only three people in the study. In real life, we have computers, but it's important to know how to do it by hand. Um, before you rely on a computer to do it forevermore so that we demystify whatever's going on in the computer. Suppose there's only three people in the study. Now, what information do we have about each of those people? Well, we know whether they won their case and we know which group they were in. Here's how we're gonna decide to write it down. First, we'll write down their outcomes, whether they won their cases. So zero means lose, okay? And one means one. So this means that for the three people in the study, the first person has a zero. So the first person in the study lost their case. The second person has a zero. So the second person in the study lost their case. Third person has a one. So the third person in the study won their case. Now I'm gonna change colors and underneath it, I'm gonna indicate which group each of those people was in. So what this means, T refers to the treatment group. So they were offered help. C refers to the control group. So they were not offered help. So what this means is the first person was offered help and they lost their case. That's the T and the zero. The second person was not offered help and they lost their case. That's the C and the zero. The third person was not offered help and they won their case. That's the C and the one. So that's our data. And now what I wanna calculate is the difference between the win rate. So the percent who won among those who were offered help and the win rate among those who are not offered help. Again, I want the difference in win rates between those who are offered help and those who are not offered help. Now there's only three total people in our study. So if we look at the win rate among people who were offered help, well, I only see one person who was offered help, right? That person was a T and they did not win, they had a zero. So the mean of the outcome variable for those who were offered help is zero. Now I wanna subtract the mean of the outcome variable in the control group, people who are not offered help. I see two people who were not offered help. Those are the two Cs and um, their outcomes were zero and one. And so the mean win rate, um, the, the win rate among people who were not offered help is 0.5. And so the difference in means between those who are offered help and those who are not offered help is negative 0.5, okay? So, so far all I've done is summarize the data, but now we're going to do the hypothesis test, okay? We're gonna do the hypothesis test. So here is the idea. We have to assume a null hypothesis. Our null hypothesis, our null hypothesis is that there's going to, that there is no impact of offer of help from HLAB on the outcomes. Okay, our assumption is that whether you're offered help from HLAB or not, has nothing to do with your outcomes, has nothing to do with your outcomes. Okay, that is our null hypothesis. Now, we also have to know something else. We have to know how these three people were assigned to be offered help or not. So let's make a temporary assumption that the way they're assigned was simple random sample. So let's pretend that you know, when we did the study, maybe there were three people, we put their names in a hat, we drew one of those names to offer somebody help from HLAB and the other two did not receive help. Okay, so simple random sample. So here's the idea. Assuming there's a simple random sample, I can think of three different ways the randomization could have come out. So far I've listed one of them. We have this TCC, right? If there's three people in the study and we put their names in a hat and draw one, one of the things that could happen is that first person could be the one offered treatment and the other two could be offered control. But here's something else that could happen. It could be that the second person was offered treatment and the other two were offered control. And it could also be that the third person was offered treatment um, and the other two are offered control. And if what I'm doing is simple random sampling where I put three names in a hat and draw exactly one name, let me say this, simple random sample with one treatment 
and the other to control, right? Under that assumption, this list I just made consists of or lists all of the ways uh, that people could be assigned to treatment versus control. So why do we do this? Well, because under the null hypothesis, which of these three possibilities we have, TCC, CTC, or CCT, has nothing to do with these outcomes, the 001. Again, the null hypothesis says that whether any particular person wins their case or not has nothing to do with whether they were offered help from HLAB. In other words, whether I have a zero or a one as my win outcome has nothing to do with whether there's a T or a C listed for me. Because again, we are temporarily making the assumption um, that HLAB has no impact whatsoever. HLAB offers have no impact whatsoever on outcomes. Well, if that's true, I should be able to write down what the difference in means would have been um, in the win rates if some other randomization had occurred, right? So let's look at this one for a second. Let's look at this one here. Suppose that what happened is I put three names in a hat and the second one was drawn. So the second person gets treatment and the other two get control. Well, under our null hypothesis, the win outcome still would have looked like this, zero, zero, one, because we're making the assumption that whether you have T or C has nothing to do with whether you have zero or one. Well, okay, so if, if the zero, zero, one would still be there, but now we have CTC, just like before, I can calculate what the difference in means would be. So I want the win rate among people who got um, offers of help. Well, there's just this one person who has a T and their um, outcome was zero, okay? And now I have two people who had Cs in this second line here, and they have a zero and a one. It's actually just like before, I get a negative 0.5, okay? Now I'm gonna do the next one. Another thing that could have happened is that I could have obtained the third person as the person offered help, and the other two could have been in control. Right, And if that had happened, my null hypothesis says that the win outcome still would have looked like this because my null hypothesis is that whether you win has nothing to do um, with, what you're, um, with, with what you were assigned, whether you were offered help or not. So let's do this again. Let's find the difference in win rates assuming this third possible way to randomize um, given that the outcomes would still be the same. So I want the proportion of people who won their cases among those who were offered help from HLAB. Well, I just have this one person, the third person who got treatment. And this time that person has a one, okay, they won their case. And now I want the proportion of people who won their cases among those assigned control. There are two of them. And this time it's the two people who had zeros. And so I got one minus zero. And now the difference in win rates is one, okay? So here's the idea. Let's find the different parts um, of the hypothesis test. We have a null hypothesis, right? We have a null hypothesis. That's our initial assumption. We're gonna assume there's um, no impact of offer of help, okay? We also have a test statistic. Here's that. We're summarizing our data in this case by finding the difference in win rates, um, the difference in mean outcomes between those who were offered help from HLAB and those who are not. And in red, we've written down what the difference in means actually was in the data set. But now what we're doing is we're trying to find the distribution of that test statistic under the null hypothesis. So the idea is a distribution is a set of all the possible values along with their probabilities. There's a negative sign that I um, don't wanna lose here. So let me bring my green back and put the negative sign right there. Okay. So the list of possible values, the test statistic, the difference in means could take on is negative 0.5, negative 0.5 and one. Okay, um, given the way this data looks, those and all the possible randomizations that could have come, these are the three possible values of that test statistic. Now a distribution is the list of values along with their probabilities. Well, if I put three names in a hat, in other words, if I'm assuming a simple random sample and I'm, I'm drawing one of the three names from the hat, then there's a one third chance that any one of these randomizations could have come. So there's a one third probability that I have this first line and I get a negative 0.5. There's a one third probability I get the second line and I get a negative 0.5. And there's a one third probability that I get this third line and I get a one. And so I can make a histogram just like we did for the lady tasting tea, showing the possible values of the test statistic, which are one and negative 0.5, along with their probabilities. There's a one third chance that I get a one. And there's a two third chance that I happen to randomize in such a way um, that I get a negative 0.5. Okay, so this is called my uh, reference distribution. This is my reference distribution. And I'm gonna pause there, okay? I'm gonna pause there because there's one more term we haven't defined yet. Okay, there's one more term we haven't defined yet, but before I define it, I would like to do an example that um, extends this one a little bit. 
Okay. Because it turns out that the way we did this here is not actually um, the way the HLAB randomization was done. In other words, this piece right here is actually not true. The truth is that we did not have a simple random sampling for the HLAB study. Rather, the way people arrived was sequential, one by one. We didn't know how many people were going to ask for help from lawyers uh, during the course of the study. We didn't know how many requests they would get over the course of a couple of years where our data was being collected. So instead, we flipped a coin. We flipped a coin for each person to determine whether they were offered help from HLAB. I literally flipped some of those coins. Okay? We used a computer when we could, but there was one time when I was on vacation. I was literally at the Iowa State Fair, and I stood there and I flipped a coin to determine whether a particular person was offered help for H from HLAB or not.